He then went on, went on to graduate from Claflin University with a degree in science and education, where he played football, basketball, ran track, and saw himself playing professional sports. Unfortunately, he did not have the support, but we still support him. He returned to Casey and worked for Kodak for 10 years and began working for the Lexington County Recreation and Aging Commission. He was placed at Spires Gym, located on, sorry, located on Dunbar Road in the 1990s. He was a part-time assistant director and worked there as a full, worked his way up as full-time assistant, as a full-time director. Unfortunately, in 2010, he had a heart attack and had to retire in 2011 with 22 years of service. During his time at Spires Gym, he ran the, the Summer Impact Camp and took numerous kids on field trips to Carowinds, Charleston, aquariums, and the mall. He gave children a safe space and uh, understanding. We would like to honor Mr. McKnight. Legend is Terry Ann Brown O'Neill, and Charlotte will tell us about her. Mrs. Terry Ann Brown O'Neill was born July 5, 1949, at 14 Pocomo Road in KC, South Carolina, to Mr. Willie Fish Brown and Mary Brown. She is one of 22 children. She attended Ida Bull Elementary at Lakeview <laughs> High School. She is a lifelong resident of Casey who attends Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. She was married to John Michael O'Neill for many years and worked at Airport High School and later Sister Care. She also had other local jobs including the State Fair which she looked forward to yearly. As a resident of Casey, she was a caregiver to her nieces and nephews at an early age and continued to be a caregiver. Mrs. O'Neill helped raise many neighborhood children and her house was seen as a refuge within the community. Today, Mrs. Terry Ann Brown O'Neill enjoys spending time with her immediate and extended family. She also recalls her historic ties to Casey and her family that impacted the city. Mrs. O'Neill will always have the city of Casey in her heart. <laughs> Julius Felder Street, Casey, South Carolina, in, in memory of Lieutenant Thomas R. Kennedy, who lost his life after complications from a near drowning accident at a family function. Mm. 
our Senator Nikki Sessler worked tirelessly to help the McCrory um, Construction Company and the city of Casey created this substation. Lieutenant Kinley was a 10-year veteran of the armed forces. His family were a longtime residents of the area. He loved his community. As a road officer, officer he often patrolled the area near Julius Felder Street. I'm gonna go off strip just a little bit. I'm gonna tell you again, it's wonderful to love your community. And if we just having a police officer that everyone knew, having someone, a face of, that came from your community, all of that made a world of a difference. Lieutenant Kenley's name will always be associated with something promoting positive community relations between the officers and their citizens. The substation, which is located on Julius Felder, will always be a place for officers to stop in and complete their work. It also will give officers the chance to spend time in the community in which they're patrolling. And with Lieutenant Kinley's in his memory, but just to know that he started that, that he kept it going. And even now, that substation is alive and well. So every time I pass it, it makes me so proud and so happy even though um, it's right in our neighborhood, um, we have to honor those that have made contributions to our city, near and far. Lieutenant Kennedy. Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, now located at 1908 Wilkerson Street. Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church has beginnings in the late 1800s under the leadership of Rev. Reverend Hawk Goodwin. They began services in a bush harbor after gaining the interest of many persons in the community. Goodwin Church was formed and located at 1000 Hawker Street. Under the leadership of Reverend Chandler, the church was given the name Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. The church has been under the leadership of several pastors, including Reverend J.C. Spann, Reverend Thomas A. Blue, Reverend C.E. Harrell, Reverend Andrew Johnson, Reverend Anthony Dix, Reverend James W. Hill, Reverend Romeo Harrison, and Reverend James Taylor. Under these ministers, the church ordained its first deacons, built an educational building and fellowship hall, purchased a church bus, began sponsoring girl and boy scouts, and made renovations to the sanctuary. The church is currently under the leadership of its 10th pastor, Reverend R. Gregory Glenn. Under his leadership, the church expanded its worship services to include two Sunday services. The church also moved to its current location on Wilkerson Street, where it includes not only a worship center, but banquet and church offices, educational and fitness facilities, as well as a three-acre outdoor park. Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. Missionary Baptist Church was begun in 1935 
when a small group of believers who were members of Mount Pleasant of Casey voted to form their own church. During this time as a religious institution, New Life Missionary Baptist Church is a rich source of religious strength and guidance. The church continues to shine in, the God's, in God's light and mercy and will remain actively in, some, uh, sorry, y in society. New Life, is mission, New Life is located at 2316 Julius Felder Street in Casey. Mr. Felder was a dynamic and charismatic member of the Casey community and was a deacon at New Life. He was ordained as a minister there, and now today, Clarence G. Johnson, Johnson is now a pastor there and has been there since 2011. The church has improved with his physical facilities and his church programs under his leadership. For 84 years, 85 years actually, New Life Missionary Baptist Church has been a vibrant and active uh, spiritual sanctuary in the, Casey, in the Casey community. Do we have a representative from New Life? The 12th Street Extension Road Project in 1987, a proposed 12th Street Extension had been planned by the Central Midlands Regional Planning Council and the City of Casey. The extension had been a part of an area, uh, area transportation improvement plan since the 1960s, but settling the route and to obtain the funding was there were many delays. The extension would link Noxavit Drive to the southeastern beltway to provide a north-south route through Casey. The first route was going to come straight down, used to be Pear Street, for those who know it as Pear Street. It is now Julius Felder Street and it would wipe out basically all of the homes and divide the community in half. The black community, along with Reverend Julius Felder, who was the president of the Casey West Columbia branch of the NAACP and a long time civil rights leader, protested this route. Whenever someone comes through your neighborhood, you got to stand up and you got to stand together. And this is what we did, those that were here, um, I'm saying we because this is a part of my husband's family, they stood up. The highway department engineers agreed to take another look at the community and felt that it could be built in a different route. However, the project engineers began surveying the new route without any public hearing. One of the homeowners read an article in the news in the neighbor's section of the state, indicating that the road was coming down Allen Street, which would wipe out her home along with all of her neighbors. After being, uh, after hearing this and knowing that it would be happening, she went and told the city of Casey. It took many meetings with, black, uh, with the black community and Casey, the state, the highway commission, the state highway engineer, the director of pre-construction Midlands, Central Midlands Planning Council before the group decided and received a call in October of 1988 for the highway director to meet with the final plans for the third project proposal. People of this neighborhood, Allen, Charlotte, are the unsung heroes. So whenever you ride down 
77. Just remember, they wanted to destroy the neighborhood. They stood up, they stood together. This community was going to be ripped apart. The fight was furious with no certainty at end, but their homes were in the line of fire. But with God, but with God, Amen. all things, yes. all things are possible. Please remember to our young people, please remember that you, not, you have to keep up. Listen, go to meetings, know what they're doing. And you, your voice matters, every voice matters. I'd like to bring up the historian, Miss Ella Rose Gladney. She was very instrumental when this project was being formed. She was with the help of leaders in, over in Richland County and the leaders in our neighborhood stood firm. And her family is the Shivers family, for those who, who want to know who she is. dietary service and became a dietitian. She was married to the late Artemis James Harrison and from this union they had six children. She was the pillar of the community and affectionately known as Miss B to many. Her door was always open and she was always ready to provide a meal. She was a successful business owner of Harry Enterprise Janitorial Service which had 50 plus employees from Casey and the surrounding areas in the mid-1980s. She was also a founding member of the Jewish Fellow Coalition for Change, a community organizer, and founder of the Golden Girls of Casey. The Golden Girls of Casey is a social group which was instrumental in helping seniors adapt to modern technology and be more socially active in the community. in January 2019 by becoming the official beekeeper for the Julius Felder Community Garden located on Allen Street. Yvonne has been a community activist most of her life, beginning with helping her grandfather, Reverend Julius Felder, who was a well-known civil rights activist. She, she assisted him with voter registration and providing transportation to polling places on election days. Yvonne is still active as a poll manager for the Lexington County Election Commission and has been the secretary for the Julius Felder Coalition for Change since 2000. Yvonne retired from the WB Dorm VA Hospital after 31 years of service as the first African American beekeeper in the area and is, grow and is growing a bee community in the Julius Felder Community Garden. The hive has helped the garden by continuing the pollination process with the vegetables and providing local honey. Yvonne is enjoying her retirement with her husband, Shel Shelton, Sheldon, and is giving back to the community one day at a time. Yvonne was instrumental in, founding, in the founding of the African American Committee, a subcommittee of the city's Casey Historical Museum. <coughs> Acknowledge our current 2023 legends. 
I'm going to just call the names out, and if you would just stand up if you're here or a representative from that day. Lily Jane Washington. to have their flowers while they're here to smell them. And that's all we that's all. So we have little refreshments. Um, they're right out front. And if you have if you have someone that you feel needs to be highlighted, make sure you let us know. Andy Thomas is the curator of the Casey Historical Museum. You can always reach him, you can call him or, well, you can call him or you can also email him. During our February postings, you can always send a comment in. We'd like to have them done before February, though. So if you know someone who needs to be highlighted, please make sure we know. And everyone, please be careful going home and have a good night. Thank <laughs> you. 